Hello YouTube, Simon here. Welcome back to the channel and I have just completed the Final Fantasy 7 remake. Well actually last night I completed it but I just needed a few hours to get my thoughts together in order to make this video. I haven't watched any other videos, I haven't read anything online about people's general opinions about the ending, what they thought of it, what it meant, what it means going forward. These are my thoughts. I could be completely off base with them compared to what the consensus is, but I did want to give you my fresh views on the matter before I start really delving into things. And we are going to get into specifics, of course, over the coming days, weeks and months as to what this ending means and what the whole story means of the first part of this adventure going forward into the future. But also thank you to everybody that's been holding off I know that many of you wanted to talk to me about the ending, talk to me about the game, but you've done a really good job in not giving me spoilers and I literally had no idea what to expect going into the final chapters of this game and I think because of that I really enjoyed it even more. And yes, overall I absolutely loved this game, I really, really enjoyed it. Now there are a few issues and I will be talking about some of that in this video, but this isn't a review video, this is specifically speaking about the end of the game and what it means going forward into the future for this project. Okay, so spoilers ahead, of course, for the rest of this video. Now, when I was playing through this final chapter, I literally, right up until the moment, had no idea whether it was going to end with the boss fight against Motorball, which, by the way, was a lot trickier in the remake. It took me a few attempts, I'm ashamed to say. Um, but obviously, that isn't the case, and after that, we do end up going into this alternative version of Midgar, or perhaps... Uh, a vision of a future version where it's been destroyed and we face off against the uh, whispers of fate and by the way that one giant boss reminded me a lot of Kingdom Hearts I played a lot of Kingdom Hearts last year and the darkness I thought was very reminiscent of that final boss fight in the remake but once we defeated that we then face off against Sephiroth himself or at least Sephiroth using some manipulation of Genova cells to make his form now what exactly is going on here well the way I understand this, again, I've not checked anything out online, so I could be completely off base here. I'm sure the theories have already started. But the way I understand this is that this isn't really a remake, okay? This seems to me to be either a reboot, going in a completely different direction than the original game, or it's some kind of continuation of the original game where Sephiroth didn't like losing and has now decided to come back and change events so that he doesn't lose as he did in the original Final Fantasy VII. Now, whether that means he's time traveled or whether the original game was kind of a vision that he had of what would happen if he didn't interfere, I don't know. I don't think any of us can know. Like I say, I'm sure there's gonna be multiple theories as to what's taking place here. But ultimately, what's very, very clear is that Square are going in a very different direction here than they did with the original Final Fantasy VII. Of course, this raises all kinds of concerns. On the one hand, I'm very excited, and I am excited, to see Square do something new here, and that caught me completely off guard. I was not expecting that. But I'm also extremely concerned because there are some really iconic moments in the original game that, for me as a fan, I do not want them to tamper with. I really don't. Or if they do have to tamper with them, at least have the outcome be the same. Of course, one of the big things is going to be the death of Aerith. That has been such an iconic moment of video gaming for the last 23 years that I think it would almost be sacrilege in video gaming circles if Square went ahead and interfered with that in the remake. The game talks a lot about destiny, especially in the, late, uh, the, the, the latter two chapters. And the characters talk about destiny and Aerith says that they all have a destiny. I think that's referring to the events as they unfold in the original game. Sephiroth's trying to make changes to that so that he doesn't lose. And the Arbiters of Fate are trying to keep things on track. And that's why Barrett didn't die. That's why they brought him back. Because obviously in the original game, which is the original timeline if you like, he doesn't die. The Arbiters of Fate needed to bring him back to keep things as they ought to be. With that in mind, it would probably still make sense that Aerith would die because she dies in the original timeline. I guess using Doctor Who language, we could say that's a fixed point in space-time. It would seem unlikely to me that the Arbiters of Fate would want to change that. However, would Sephiroth perhaps not want to kill her? I don't know. Who knows? We'll have to find out. But I am a little bit nervous, I'm going to be honest with you, about some of the events of the original game being tampered with. So I was a little bit surprised to see Zack so early on by early on at the end of this game, but early on in the overall story. Uh, but also we don't see him get killed. Now, does that mean he doesn't get killed? 
or did we just the, the game does not want to reveal to us at this point that he does get killed i'm not sure uh, maybe you guys would like to comment down below and, and let me know if i've missed anything with that but i was expecting to see the scene where zap gets shot and then cloud takes up the buster sword we don't see that but then maybe we just didn't get to that bit because i don't think we actually see the bit where cloud takes the buster sword at all and yet we know he has it because he's been using it at the start of the game or maybe they are hinting that Zack is still alive. I really don't know. Yeah, I'm confused by that. If you guys want to shed some light on that for me, then you know I'd really appreciate that. Please do so. And also then, I want to talk about Sephiroth himself. Has he time traveled? Is there something about Sephiroth having been killed in the original Final Fantasy VII, going back into the live stream, he still retains his power, he's able to manipulate the flow of time somehow, the flow of the planet, and then, you know, head back in time in order to make these changes in the remake version. Um, but if it's not time travel, let's assume for a moment it isn't, then what is going on? Has Sephiroth had some kind of vision? This is perhaps what I'm leaning towards, that the original Final Fantasy VII that we played, the PlayStation version, was perhaps supposed to be some kind of vision or something of Sephiroth that he's had as to what's going to happen. And if so, is he then not travelling back in time, but had his vision before these events and is therefore trying to manipulate fate, manipulate destiny right from the get-go? As far as I know, unless we get told otherwise, Sephiroth is still encased in Mako, Mako and he's still manipulating the reunion, the Genova reunion, by taking control of that process and controlling all of the various Genova cells. Now, we know that it's not Sephiroth himself, as in his physical body, because he's still using the Sephiroth clones. Clone is a bad translation, but it's what I'm used to, so it's the phrase I'm going to be using. He's still using the Sephiroth clones. I think we saw two clones in this game, the one with the tattoo number two, and the one with the tattoo 49, I think it was. And then he's using them to accomplish his purposes. So when we defeat Sephiroth at the end of this game, it's not Sephiroth's actual body, of course, it's one of the clones, at least this is what I'm assuming, it's one of the clones that he's used to take on his form by manipulating those Genova cells. That also gives us an explanation though as to why we actually see more of Sephiroth in the remake than we did in the original Final Fantasy VII. That scene, for example, in Chapter 2, where Sephiroth is leading Cloud through the uh, ruins of the, the explosion of the first Mako reactor, it canonically didn't happen in the original game. It's not just that the player didn't see it, it didn't happen. This is Sephiroth trying to manipulate the effects or, or the events, the, the destiny of, the, of, of himself and of the party and of the planet and all of that in a way that never occurred in the original game. So it's not only that his role was expanded, that's why we got to see him more, it's actual new story in the sense that he was doing things he never did in the original Final Fantasy VII canonically. But there's just so much I want to talk about. One of the party members had a vision of Red 13 running with his children, his offspring, which we know is taken from the epilogue of the original Final Fantasy VII once Midgar has been destroyed. But Red 13 refers to that as what will happen if they fail. That was a really interesting line of dialogue. It's almost as if the ending of the original Final Fantasy VII is a failure of the party. So is that seen as the bad ending? Are we going to be working towards something different here now over the course of the full project with the remake here? You know, there's so much more I want to say, but I'm not going to before my thoughts all get mixed up and I just end up uh, making no sense whatsoever. We are going to do some deep dives into the various specific aspects of the ending here and of other parts of the game in future videos once I've had more time to digest everything that's happened. But overall, I am very, very excited. I really want to know what's going to happen next. But I can't deny the fact that I'm also incredibly nervous. If Square are going in a radical different direction here, maybe their thinking was, Everybody wants a remake, so we'll give them that for part one, and that's pretty much what they've done. But once that's appeased the appetite for the remake, we need to give them something new for the subsequent part. So I think that's the kind of philosophy that Square have followed here. So I suspect, I could be wrong here, but I suspect that Final Fantasy VII Part Two is going to be very different, very different to the uh, events following Midgar in the original game. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be aspects of, and probably, you know, many aspects that are made for Final Fantasy VII fans. I'm sure there will be. There will be locations, the characters. 
I'm sure that the party will still meet the same party members going forward with Yuffie and Sid and Vincent and Kate Sith that we've already seen uh, briefly glimpsed in part one here. Uh, but I suspect the story is going to take on quite a different approach. But if you have any views or want to talk about something that I've touched but not really got into greater detail on or if you think I've missed something big then please do share that in the comments section. I've got so much I need to go through now, so much I need to think about. I want to do you know all kinds of videos where we're talking about theories and stuff so I really need to start brushing up on it all. Yeah please do share that, I'd be really interested in hearing your own thoughts, views and opinions. I know some of you were disappointed with the ending here and I can understand that. I think it's a big risk that they've decided to do something new here but let's see how it pays off. Problem is we've got a bit of a wait now, haven't we? Could be a couple of years before we find out exactly the direction that Square are taking things in. But thanks so much for stopping by checking out this video today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please don't forget to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. And big shout out to everybody who supports the channel, either as a YouTube member or Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.